And I mean to tell you, that night, I lay in my bed and those words kept hounding my mind. I'll have a lot of friends and we'll drink a lot of beer. And let me tell you, if I could use a term, a worldly term, at that point I was about as miserable as hell because I knew I would have no friends in hell. And I knew there was no water or any liquid in hell except fire and brimstone, which is liquid sulfur on fire that drips onto your body. If there's anything liquid that I can get my tongue on, it'll be sulfur. I believe, friend, that if I neglect my great salvation, and let's say, for example, I just want to dramatize this to the best of my ability, that if I should from this day out neglect this so great salvation that God has given me, And Pastor James should choose to neglect this so great salvation. Let's say in hell, we happen to see each other and happen to talk to each other, just exchange words. On this earth, we have been best of friends and we love each other and we mess with each other because we love each other. We're friends, right? But let me tell you something. If we should happen, I believe this with all my heart, that if in hell we should happen to see each other in the bottomless pit, sinking forever and ever and ever, if I could get my hands on him perchance, I will beat him as long as I can beat him. Why? Why, James, did you not force me to repent? Why did you not do everything in your power to get me to repent? Why did you not keep me from this place? Oh, yes. And at that moment, it will be eternal hatred toward him. Because you see, hell is eternal separation from God. Hell is eternal separation from anything good. Then remember that the word God is very clear. Excuse me. God is love. And in hell there will be no love. There will be no ability to relate to Pastor James in love. It will only be hatred. Yes, that's right. There'll be no friends in hell, brother, sister, neighbor, friend. There'll be no friends in hell. There is a large gulf fixed between heaven and hell. That there is no passing from one to the other. Please don't go there. In hell, in hell there will be Worms. In hell there will be worms. Look at what the word of God says. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than to have two hands to go into hell. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than to have two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye, than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. The book of Revelation describes hell as being a place of a bottomless pit. For a long time, I didn't know quite how to describe it. Lord, how will that bottomless pit happen? 
But I want you to see here in 2 Peter chapter 3, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. So the stars and, and the place the second heaven is what he's talking about. The second, the atmosphere, and then the, the, the place, the, the sun, moon, and stars, all those, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. So we've seen the early signs of that, haven't we? With the meteors that happened in California and in Russia. And the Bible says that those things will happen. There'll be a shaking. The stars will shake themselves like a fig tree shaketh her untimely figs. We've seen that. We're almost here. But in that day, not only will there be a shaking, but the heavens will melt with fervent heat. But not only the heavens, but the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things will be dissolved. Dissolved. Verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, when the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. Excuse me. And the elements shall be, shall melt with fervent heat. So where does this bottomless pit come from? Earth. The only place that has living souls on it. Remember, we stand at the judgment bar of God, and then when our sentence is given to, the, to those that have not received Him as the Lord of their life, they'll be cast out. Depart from me! I never knew you, you worker of iniquity! Hear the wrath of God. And they're cast out and back to the earth. And now, suddenly starts a fire. You look toward Fort Wayne, and it's burning. You look toward Hicksville, it's burning. You look toward Woodburn, it's burning. You look toward Leo, it's burning. And if perchance Harlan, or wherever you live, will be the only place... But friend, you need to know that this whole earth is going to melt with a fervent heat. This whole earth is going to be on fire. And if this earth, this large, great, big globe is going to burn with fervent heat and melt away, one day, let's have a reality check here. One day, this earth is going to be the size of this microphone mouthpiece. For a minute second, and then even that will be melted to nothing. When this earth is melted away, what's left? Nothing. Nothing! Nothing but space. And we know what happens in space is an eternal floating. That's where the earth is hung right now. It's rotating on its axis in space. You know what it is, friends, to wake up in the middle of a dream. You're dreaming that you're falling. (sighs) And you scream. Can you imagine in real life, friend, this earth is melted away and everything under your feet is gone. And you're in a bottomless pit. The Bible says very clearly there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, God! Abraham! And you open your mouth to scream. That word worm, literally translated in the Greek, is maggot. I understand that Jesus may have been referring to the soul for such a worm as I. But friend, I'm going to stick with what the Bible says. Where the fire is not quenched and the worm dieth not. And you open your mouth to scream. And ishy, gishy, squishy magnets in your mouth. Don't go there. Don't go there. In hell, there will be memory. 
In hell there will be memory. In Luke 16, 25, but Abraham said, son, remember, 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 do you remember, do you remember, 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 remember. Remember, I believe with all my heart that the worst, most horrible, all horrifying, awful thing in all of hell is not the worms, is not the lack of water, is not the lack of friends, is not the lack of comfort, but feeding into all this awfulness is the fact that in hell there is memory. To remember the day that God spoke to my heart that I had opportunity oh, come on, that I could have gone to an altar of prayer and given him my heart That's right. that I could have called on the name of the Lord because I knew that Joel and I said that it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I remember. And I didn't. I remember when I had opportunity. I remember hearing loved ones praying for me. I remember when the loved ones implored me to come to Jesus. I remember the gentle, faithful rebuke of a friend that said, don't make that decision. I remember that time I started my downward spiral. Oh, if only, if only I'd have heeded the advice of my mother, my father. Oh, if only I had heeded the advice. Remember. Remember. What do you think the rich man, or excuse me, the rich young ruler is going to say, I remember when Jesus told me there was just one thing standing between my soul and the Savior. One thing. Oh, I wish I had. I wish I left there sorrowful. I wish I had in my sorrow just given it up. I remember. I remember, 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 I can't say it loud and ugly enough, just remember, oh my God, remember, Who will go there? Who will go there? And shall he say also unto them on the left hand, those on the left hand, they're going, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The devil and his demons will be there. <clears throat> Friend, do you see what this scripture says? Do you see this? Prepared, this everlasting fire is prepared for who? The, devil's and his angels. the devil and his angels. Hell was never prepared for man. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. But see who's going? Those on the left hand are joining him by their own volition, by their own decision and choices. <laughs> Those who worship the beast in his image will be there. Those who receive the mark in their forehead or hand, they'll be there. Revelation 21 verse 8, the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars. Children, do you want to know why your parents are so serious about you speaking the truth? 
because all liars will be there. But I believe there's a reason that the fearful are first. Because the fear of man is what keeps so many people from making that decision. From selling out to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. All these will have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. No fornicator, nor idolater, adulterer, effeminate. Abusers of themselves with mankind. By the way, the effeminate has to do with the homosexual lifestyle. They wonder where it is in the word of God. Right there it is. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance. That's division in the church. Emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling. And of such like I tell you, which I tell you before, I've told you in time past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. <clears throat> How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Friends, hell will be filled with people who neglect so great salvation. I can name all these things. I can name all these scriptures And tell you these will be there and these will be there. But the bottom line is it will be those who neglect. Those who push it off. Those who say the time is not now. Those who say not. Just see me later. Agrippa. King Agrippa. The one that Paul ministered to is going to be there. Unless he repented without record. He said almost you persuade me to be a Christian. Almost you convince me to go all the way Paul. Felix, he said, come see me another day. I may in another day. Those men, if they've not repented, will be there. Neglect. Those whom the Spirit of God has spoken to and said, take care of this issue in your life. Don't do this. And if they don't listen to the Spirit of God... They'll be there. Neglect. And this brings us to the close of today's message. In the middle of the dark, awful, horrible reminder of the devil's hell comes a shining light. Do you see this, friend? This, this is why we exist as believers. For God, oh, oh, look at the love beam coming on your heart. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Yes, amen. You don't need to go there, friend. You can escape this judgment. You can escape this wrath. You can escape this doom because there is a man who comes into the picture. His name is Jesus. Here he comes and he gives his life that you and I do not need to perish, but have everlasting life. We get to sit on the right side if we believe. Do you believe? Do you believe, friend, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. You're on your way to hell. That's what that means. You're on the way to the eternal judgment. If you don't believe because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this morning or last night, well, this morning. This jumped out at me so clearly. And this is the condemnation. Now he says, here's the reason for this condemnation. Because Jesus, the light is come into the world. And men love the darkness more than the light. So friend, listen, if you are not saved today, the bottom line reason is because you love the way you are more than 
Jesus. You love your own way more than light. You love your own way more than truth. And this is your condemnation. Horrible thought. People plundering their way on the precipice of eternity, on the precipice of hell, just going on because they love their own way more than the way of God. Oh my God, what will he say at the judgment regarding this? Oh, heaven, heaven. I would be remiss if we would not talk about heaven also known as glory. (laughs) The Bible says we will be taken up to glory. (laughs) So we could call it heaven or we could call it glory. It's the place of the redeemed. It's the place where God dwells. If I ask you today, friend, why do you want to go? I thought we'd have time. I really did. I thought we'd have time and I just opened the floor. Why do you want to go? I did it before. I asked this at a, at a nursing home one day. Why do you want to go? And there was this blessed, dear little saint of God, uh, palsied little girl. She was from childhood and, and her mother was so dear to her heart and her father was very mean. And when, Mother passed away. They put her at the Mark Rest Center. And, and I said, why do you want to go? And she, I want to go to see my mother. Comfort. Bless her heart. And she loved Jesus. I want to go to see the streets of gold. I, I want to go to see those gates of pearl. I, I want to see those walls of jasper. I want to see the angels sing. I want to see the beasts gathered around the throne with the four and twenty elders. I want to see all this. Just hold on. <laughs> Woo! I want to go to see Jesus. I want to see the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. I want to look into those eyes that went down by the shores of Galilee and said, Come, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. I want to see the eyes, the face of the one that hung on the cross and looked at the ones that were nailing him there, the ones that had scorned, the ones that had beaten him, the ones that had scoffed, the ones that had given him the death sentence. Uh, And he looks at him, Father, Father, forgive them. And I believe in that moment in dying, He looked into the eyes of all those perpetrators and spoke forgiveness. I want to see him. I want to see him. That's why I want to go. Look upon the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And forever. Oh, then forever I shall be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. Hallelujah. Jesus. And I, John, saw the holy city. (laughs) Oh, friend, you're all thinking about heaven. But look across the chasm. Right now, right now, look across the chasm at the fire. Oh, God, have mercy. Look across the chasm and hear the weeping and gnashing of teeth right now. Now, be done. And John says, and I, John, saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem descending from God. Woo! Out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. 
I've said this before. I've never seen an ugly bride. I've been to a lot of weddings and performed a lot of weddings. Never seen an ugly, ugly bride. She does everything she can. She makes herself beautiful. She gets herself ready for one reason and one reason alone. And that is because the groom is ready to meet her. She primps and she preens and she adorns and she all these things because today I'm getting married. And that's what Jesus is doing. He's primping, he's preening, he's adorning, he's getting ready. And now he says, it's all ready. Father, it's all ready. See, in John chapter 14, he said, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. And once it's ready, I'm going to come and receive you. Well, here it is. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending from God out of heaven as a bride adorned for husband. Ooh, glory to God. You see that? And then you got to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and redeem, and, and, and then we which are alive and remain, thank you, shall be caught up with them. And so shall we meet the Lord in the air. So see it? Oh, the grand entry into the holy city. I'm just putting piece and piece together here. And the trumpet. Corey, get that trumpet ready. I'm going to have you blow that thing real hard sometime soon here. The trump of God will sound. This is what it's going to sound like. The trumpet of God will sound. And then it's over. Then it's over. If you're righteous, the book of Revelation says, he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. It's over. If you've conducted yourselves under the righteousness, the imparted righteousness of God, you will be with the redeemed. When that trumpet sounds, Corey, stand and blow it as loud as you can. Because the whole earth will hear this sound. Every soul will hear it. Oh, Jesus, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. I love the thought. I've, I've never understood. Now, I always... And in study here, I found that I may have been wrong. I I think I'm still going to do it. But I always thought that everyone is going to cast their crowns at the feet of Jesus. This is the only thing I can find that the four and 20 elders are going to cast their crowns. I want to. But I found a lot of scripture that says the saints will worship him with crowns on their heads. But he's worthy of my crown. I, oh, he's so worthy. And I couldn't understand how in the world I would get to cast my crown at his feet. Because of all the saints that have gone before me and have done it already. And then I read in Revelation that there's no need of the sun there. For the lamb himself is the light in the midst of the city. Well, God is omnipotent. He's everywhere all the time. And wherever you go in that city, if he shows you your mansion on the uh, 7,000 miles away on the other side of the city, he's still there. And so I could just cast my crown down because he's there. He's there. Because he's the light. His presence fills the city with his light. 
Oh, friends, do you see? Heaven. But only the redeemed can go there. Only those who are washed white by the blood of the Lamb. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? I'm ready. Oh, my God. If, If you will just come right now. Oh, that gives me a solid goose bump. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Don't go to hell. And by the way, sinners, if you're here today and you're a sinner, don't ever tell someone to go to hell. Believers would never do such a thing. But sinners, even you, be serious about this thing. Don't ever tell someone to go to hell. Please, don't do that, Dawson. Friends, this is a serious call. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? If you weren't here last Sunday, make sure you get the CD. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation. Doug, if you'll come. He's our healer today. He's the lamb. Jesus is the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe you're my healer. I believe you're all I need. I trust you today. And today I speak those words of faith over this congregation. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let faith arise and hearts be changed and drawn to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Speak, Lord. Speak in Jesus' name. Well, brother... Well, they're going to play some music. If you need to pray, I don't care how old you are, children, seniors, if you need to pray, you come pray, please. Prepare yourself. Yes, because he's coming for a pure bride. Are you ready?